Hello, this is Derek from One River Tea. Uh, today what we're gonna do is a very special thing. We have our Dan Song sample box, and we're gonna do an unpacking, our very first unwrapping of this special thing. This morning here in Yangzhou, Jiangsu, China, it's raining, it's September, it's kinda cool, I got my jacket out. Weather's perfect for Dan Song. So that's why we pushed this to the front. What we're gonna do is we're gonna un unwrap this, look at all the teas inside, I'll give a brief description, and then we'll pick one and we'll drink it in the next session. So, before further ado, let's get into it. But first, if you like what we're doing here, if you appreciate our teas, give us a like and a subscribe, and we'll be sure to keep creating these videos for you. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so let's check it out. As you can see, in the box we have six different varieties of Dan Song tea, all in 24 gram increments. What we started doing is we have four selections from the High Mountain Garden. This is Master Wei. His tea garden is beautiful. You can check out the videos to come in the future of us exploring it and just seeing the pickers and the tall ladders picking these moss-grown trees. The environment's beautiful. The processing is superb. And what I'm excited about this year is he's given us a little more roast than he did last year. Last year all the teas were very, very clean. Now you get a little bit of that charcoal. Uh, so after Waze 4, we have one from a mid-mountain producer. This is the Yashir Shang. Uh, this is Hui Wei. Uh, we've gotten a lot of good feedback about Hui Wei's Yashir Shang. They're really, really good with roasting the tea. And Yashir Shang, uh, if you don't know, it's duck shit oolong. Uh, <laughs> That tea does very well under a good roast. So we have that from 2020. And then we have this very interesting tea from Lin, which I'll get into. We call it Fry Dan Song. Uh, he called it a Chao Dan Song. So we'll get into that. First, <clears throat> check out what Master Wei has. With all of these teas, we provide these little uh, information cards. I don't know if you re recognize this, but the background is from Lin's uh, Lin's production methods, you can see the tea is oxidizing. This is after the Yao Qing. I think we bring this up in one of Lin's videos in the production of his Mao Cha. But this is called Osmanthus fragrance. I know what you're thinking, Osmanthus, what the heck is that? That's a pretty weird word. I also didn't know. I only knew it by the Chinese word Gui Hua, which I actually have some Gui Hua. So give me one jump cut real quick. This is Gui Hua. Gui Hua is a flower really prominent in the autumn time here in spring or here, here in uh, Jiangsu in our province and all throughout China it is a beautiful flower in the autumn around this time in mid October early to mid October these trees start flowering all throughout the city and everywhere you go in the evening just is filled with this fragrance I w really wish you could smell it because it's something both sweet floral and fruity, almost has like a, a really fresh cut peach, like when you bite into a peach, that kind of fragrance. Hmm. Yeah, it's, the dried flowers still don't do it justice. Although this tea is called a Guihua fragrance, it has no actual flowers in it. it. It, no part in the production process were flowers involved. It just reminds people of that fragrance, I guess. Uh, Dan Song has you know, 200 different varietals. <clears throat> so, it makes sense that they will start naming things differently. Actually, I think Wei Hua, or Osmanthus fragrance, is a subheading for, or a category for a lot of different types of teas. Give me one more jump cut. This is the big book of Dan Song tea. It's a Zhongguo Feng Huang Cha. So it's China Phoenix tea. 
So this is a tea that our master Wei turned us on to. This is a book our master Wei turned us on to. He had it. We saw it in a lot of different tea houses. It's written by a guy, uh, Mr. Huang, who is just like really, really studied Chinese dance song tea. It has so much information in here. It's a really, really lovely book. But what I'm looking for right now is the way it breaks down all of the different categories, different types of Chinese dance song teas. So. If you thought Dan Song was easy to understand, check out this book. It goes through, tells you all of the different types of teas, the production methods. Uh, what I want to do is find that Guihua fragrance and see just how many teas are under that. So, let's check it out. So there it is. It's not a very big one. It's number four down here. I don't know if you can see it. But there are two teas in the mix. So there's the Gui Hua Shan, which is the one we have. And then there's the Ju tea. So it's like the, what is it? The gentleman's, gentleman's varietal. Interesting. <clears throat> that said, it is fairly well established as a varietal. Let's see what the information says on the card. Stan Song is, the Stan Song varietal is distinguished by its relatively long plump leaves and floral scent. Its unique fragrance has made it a staple varietal, not one suited for everyone's palate. Hmm. Wei recommended this year's Elves Manthus fragrance as something new for our customers to sample. So, this Elves Manthus fragrance, I believe, I'll have to try it again. So, yeah, stay tuned in this following and I'll kind of walk you through how this tea tastes. Next in the lineup is this bamboo fragrance. This bamboo fragrance is really, really interesting. The Zhu Hua Shang. Again, I think the bamboo fragrance is one of its own subheadings. It has just this really nice aroma of just wood, leaves, and just like, it's not quite vegetal. It's more like, like I mentioned, like that wood taste. And so that's really, really interesting. I think the roast on this one's a little higher. Actually, I think this was one of my favorite teas this year. It'll probably be the first one we drink later today. They call it the, what is this? The Milan Shang, the King Milan Shang. So we'll look at it in the book later and see where it is in relation to the Milan Shangs. But I think this tea was very, very fantastic. So I'll set that aside for later. <clears throat> Next tea in reds varieties, we have the uh, Dongfang Hong. The East is red. This is a, a throwback to the <laughs> Cultural Revolution. Uh, it's a revolutionary song. It goes something like a Dong Fang Hong, Tai Yang Sheng, Zhong Wo Chu Le Ge Mao Zedong. Or really just a, a praise that Mao Zedong was born in China. It's a, in China, they, they really, really love his memory and cherish it. And so this tea is just a very nationalistic tea. It's very, very interesting to see a lot of these people in the Feng Huang Zhen had kind of direct interactions with the Red Army. Uh, there was a farmer down by Lin, <clears throat> an old Mr. Lin, uh, he kind of had white hair, he was always smoking cigarettes, he was in some of the videos. He talks about growing rice for the Red Army up on Wudong Shan back in like you know, this, of the 50s and 40s and stuff like that. So really cool to see all, all of this history coming together. <clears throat> the information card's pretty, pretty great too. So that's one of the fun things is reading about them on these cards. Uh, the next one from Master Wei is this Almond Fragrance Dance Song. This is the Xingren Shang. Almond Fragrance has a few different varietals. So, so there's the Xingren Shang, there's the, I think the Taoren Shang. The difference between the Xingren Shang and Taoren Shang is very, very minimal. I think this is the Xingren Shang, and that means apricot kernel. Taoren Shang is peach kernel. So, if you know anything about almonds, you'll know that somebody decided to hide almonds inside of peach kernels. Uh, so if you ever eat a peach and you get the seed, you crack it open, you'll find a bunch of almonds in there. It's ridiculous, really, really strange. But supposedly apricots also do the same thing. And so some, some people will call it apricots as apricot, apricot kernels as Chinese almond versus Western almond, but really they're both almonds. And so this is, in our minds, just a varietal of the almond fragrance. 
Almond fragrance is really nice. You do get that natural nuttiness. <clears throat> but yeah, this is all from Master Wei's High Garden Plot. Next in the list, we have the Yasha Shang. This is the 2020 edition from the Huawei. We've carried Huawei for the past couple of years. Huawei's Yasha Shang has been very popular, the 2018 version especially. It has just a really, really solid roast to it. And as I mentioned earlier, the Yasha Shangs are very buttery and does really, really well with a good roast. So another thing I forgot to mention about these cards is we have the Harvest State, the Producer, the Farm, the Elevation. This is our mid-mountain uh, Yasha Shang. So Huawei Wei is our mid-mountain connection. Their farms, her farms are about 600 meters above sea level, while Wei's are closer to two, 1,200. So this is Wei. <clears throat> Spring 2020 Master Way, uh, elevation 1,200 meters. So as we're going down the mountain, we get that higher roast, this duck shade fragrance, the Yasha Shang. <clears throat> and that one is, is very nice. Uh, we really like Wei Wei because she kind of keeps that standard going. Finally, we have our favorite, favorite Lin. Lin is our low mountain producer. Uh, his plot is only about 300 meters above sea level, and this is a very interesting tea that he has for us this year. It's called the Fried Dan Song. Uh, he called it a Chao Dan Song, but really what happened is he deviated quite a bit from his normal production method. He makes Mao Cha all day, every day, almost throughout the entire year, except for winter time. <clears throat> and so I imagine that gets a little boring and he wanted to spice it up a little bit. So with this Chao Dan Song, he threw a lot of what he does out the window. He didn't do as much Yao Qing, so the leaves are a lot more green. He didn't let them oxidize, he didn't uh, macerate them, he didn't bruise them, he didn't shake wilt them. He just kind of let them wither down naturally, lose some of their water content. And then instead of passing them through his kill green machine, he put them all into a wok and fried them up with his own hands. And so as a result, I also don't think it was passed through the shaping machine because the teas, as you'll see, the leaves are a little more thick, they're plump, and they have a different look. They're way more green, and the aroma is very, very fresh. So it's almost like processing this Dansong Oolong like a green tea. It'll be really exciting when we do check it out. As I mentioned, I'll go through all these teas. I'm going to start drinking them. I'll put all the videos into a little playlist. So if you do get this Dansong sample box, as you're drinking your sessions, you can drink along with me. That's all I have to say for that, and yeah, we're gonna get, get right into drinking some of these teas. So, hope you're having a good day, and if you like this video, if you like our teas, give us a like, subscribe, and you know, check out these channels that I'll start creating too. Alright, see you guys later. Cheers.